In this video, I'm going to show you how you can have all the possible combinations of feedback for a multiple choice, multiple answer question. Okay, so um, for, if you happen to be an e-learning designer and you've spoken with a developer and they've said, oh no, you can't do individual specific feedback for a multiple choice, multiple answer question, that's not entirely true. In fact, it, it's very possible to do it. It's just very labor intensive and most developers will avoid it uh, for those obvious reasons. Let me show you what I mean. Now, if you're a developer, you can follow this video along and see how you can build it uh, yourself. So it is something that requires a custom uh, multiple choice, multiple answer uh, solution. I'm not aware of a way you could do this with the built-in multiple choice question slide, but let me show you on my screen here. So I've built this, um, this slide here and I've already done some of the work and I'll share that with you here. The first thing is you need to work out all the possible answers to this question. So um, I've kept it very simple here. If they answer none of the answers, as you can see here, I give them my incomplete message, whatever that might be. If they choose, and I just sort of systematically went through, and uh, you know, as you can see here, if I just number these, and we just see how many possible combinations there are, we'll see quickly that there are 16 possible answers when there are four answers and any combination could potentially be correct. So we have obviously no answer chosen. We have the final answer chosen, the second last answer chosen, the last two answer chosen, the third uh, or the second answer and and so on. You can see I've gone through and come up with all the iterations until all the answers essentially in all of the above would be that selection right there. So it comes out to 16 possible combinations. So again, why developers don't want to do this because it needs, it means they have to write 16 different advanced answer checks in their submit button, but also they need to create um, 16 different feedback messages as well. Now I do it this way. I create a feedback caption that, that has a normal state that's completely transparent. So it's zero opacity, zero width. And then if we go into state view, you can see that I've already done the hard work of, you know, all the different possible messages, depending on what the learner has selected here. So incomplete message, uh, you chose answer D, that's incorrect. You chose answer C, that's incorrect. C and D and so on, of course, right up to 16 possible uh, combinations. So let's exit from that there. We don't need to worry about that right now. So to do this with a custom knowledge check question where multiple answers can be selected and submitted, you need to keep track of um, the answers that are selected through the use of variables. So I'm gonna go into the project dropdown menu and go into variables. I've already done the work here. You can see that these first four variables are exactly that. It's uh, the slide number and then answer 01, 02, 03, 04. So, and their initial values are just null. There's no value assigned. But as you press on them, you'll be either assigning a value of one or assigning a value of zero. And I'll show you what that advanced action looks like. So let's take the first answer and take a look. I've already created these advanced actions in the interest of time. They're very simple. They're just a simple toggle here. So for the uh, answer one action, we are checking to see if its value is equal to zero. If it is, which is how it is at first, we're going to assign a value of one to that very same variable. And we're gonna change the state of the actual object to selected. If it's already equal to one, it will run these else commands down here and assign it back to zero and return the answer item back to normal. In addition, there's a final action that returns the state of our feedback caption also back to normal or transparent, if you will. 
This is a multi-state object with my own custom selected state. So when I'm selecting it, it will change to the color green and the checkbox will get checked as well. If I press it again, obviously it'll go back to normal. And we can preview this to make sure this part of it works before we worry about the submit button. That's where things will get complicated. So we'll just preview this right now and see if that works okay. Yes, so I can select and deselect any of these and it works perfectly fine. Now, when we submit, we're going to, and I've already done the first advanced action that's going to be included in submit. Now with Adobe Captivate 2019, you can have multiple tabs or multiple decision tabs uh, for your advanced action, almost as if each one is its own advanced action. So I've done the first one already. This is incomplete. So if my four variables are all equal to zero, that means I've not selected an answer at all. I'm going to change the state of that feedback item down here to my incomplete message. Okay. Now, all I need to do at this point is duplicate this so that I end up with those 16 different advanced actions all in tabs to validate all those combinations. So if I duplicate this here, we can first of all deal with answer D. Okay. Now answer D would be a value, a literal value of one. And by the way, you know, if you have a cheat sheet like this already in place, I would recommend that you have it maybe open on your other monitor so you can kind of keep track of that. So this is answer D. We're going to change our message to answer D here. Okay. And uh, now we can duplicate it again. And the next item is going to be answer C. So we'll see the feedback for when answer C is chosen. And that would be the literal value of one here and this back to zero. And we will change our message to answer C. So now let's duplicate this once more. This will be a combination of answer C and D. So I'm just going to change that C and D. And that's if both of these items are selected. And then we're going to change our feedback to answer C and D. So I'm going to keep repeating these steps for all the combinations on my spreadsheet that you have here. For those that are members of my YouTube channel, you'll be able to download not only the completed version of this project file, but I'll make this spreadsheet available to you as well so you can help prepare to create such a slide if you want to build one from scratch. So I'm going to fast forward right now at this point and I'll get this done and then we'll preview it and see how it works. Okay, so I've managed to get all of my decision tabs complete here. So let's just recap. We're starting off with incomplete and that's with none of the answers selected. Then answer D, answer C, answer C and D, answer B, and so on. Now with, uh, of course, answer A and B, we need to find that in our list here. I simply labeled this as correct because I want to do a couple of other things to this particular uh, slide when you get it correct. Obviously, we're going to see the correct feedback, which is great. But I also want to show the continue button because at this point, we can allow the learner to continue with the rest of the course. So continue slide one here. In addition, you don't have to do this, but I think it's just uh, a nice way to deal with this is that you could disable all four of these buttons so that the answers uh, you know, can no longer be changed at that point. So let's do that in this case here. We'll disable uh, answer one, disable answer two, disable answer three, and disable, oops, 
answer four. Now, if you're going to allow learners to return to this slide at a later time, you're probably going to want an on enter advanced action that returns these back to enabled and resets your variables back to zero so they can, you know, make another attempt. So let's go ahead and update this action. Click OK. And once that's finished, we can go ahead and close. Now, if we wanted to do that advanced action on enter, I've already written one from before. Let's just make sure that we're assigning all our variables back to zero. We don't need to worry about tries anymore because we're not doing that anymore. And we're returning the states of all of our objects back to normal. And we're enabling them so that people can make another attempt. So this should work fine. Let's update that advanced action, click close. And let's do a preview in HTML5 and see if this works. So if I chose, let's say, no answer and I hit submit, I get the message, you must make a selection before submitting. Now, remember, I included um, some advanced actions for each of these buttons here that will also reset my message down below. So if I choose answer A and answer D and hit submit, I get specific feedback for that situation. If I unselect that and chose answer A and C, again, I'll get a specific message. And you can customize that based on the knowledge that you're actually teaching in this lesson. But if we get it correct, of course, we're going to get both. We'll get the correct answer message. Congratulations. And now, of course, we can press continue, which has got kind of a funky rollover effect that I need to fix. But in a nutshell, this is how you would produce such a result. And again, remember, if you're a member of my YouTube channel, uh, a downloads only member, you will be able to download, of course, this spreadsheet just to help you keep track of all these choices and, and feedback answers you need to create. And of course, the project itself so that you can recreate this for your own slides. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, Hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.